Hi everybody, this is Doug Keeling again, and today I'm going to show you how to take a picture that is uh, a little bit dull and boring and just kind of amp it up a little bit, make it a little more visually interesting. Uh, so we've got this picture of a chair here out in the field, and uh, why it's in the field I have no idea. Um, but we're going to use a couple techniques here to just um, hopefully tone it up and make it a little little nicer than what it is currently. So the first thing I'm going to do is add an adjustment layer. Adjustment layers are great because uh, at any point you can go back and edit them and um, you know without altering the actual image itself. So what I'm going to do here is uh, take my brightness up to about 20 on the positive side, take my contrast up to about 20 as well, and uh, that looks pretty decent for now. We're going to keep that. We can click the little uh, arrow, the little back arrow here, and we're going to add another one to it. We're going to add a curves adjustment layer. So pull that up. Over here you'll want to choose the green channel. And we're going to just click right on this line here and uh, drag it up and over to the left just a hair. Just uh, like that, that looks good. And um, I don't know if you were paying attention to the actual image when I slid that, but it just kind of boosts all of those green, uh, green colors, green hues, and so forth within the image. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, go back here to the adjustments, and I'm going to uh, add a hue and saturation uh, adjustment layer. And I'm just going to bump the saturation up, leave pretty much everything else the same. Bump the saturation up to, well, I think, about 20. On that will be good, too. All right, that looks a little more vibrant there. Our field doesn't look quite so uh, dead. I don't know what the deal was with the picture. It just seemed a little, little dull there. So, All right, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do here now is to go over this image with a filter um, and hopefully bring out some of the edges and, and see what we can do there. So I'm going to go up to, uh, actually first of all, I'm going to duplicate this layer. You can do it a couple ways. You can either drag the layer down over the new layer button and it'll create a copy. I'm going to undo that. Or you can just press on the keyboard command or control on the PC, uh, command or control J, and that creates the duplicate layer for you. Alright, so now on my duplicated layer, we're just going to call this high pass like that. I'm going to go up to uh, filter menu, down to other, and choose high pass. And now um, in the preview you can see it kind of looks kind of kind of weird here. Um, I really can't explain what high pass does other than it, it finds all of these edges and uh, basically it basically just locates those and, and uh, kind of defines them a little bit. Um, if you're working with a really large image you're going to want to increase the radius um, of of your your pixels here, because otherwise it might not really do too much. Uh, obvi obviously, other than make it this sort of weird grayish, washed out kind of uh, image that you can see here. But in any case, I'm going to leave it at one one pixel for for what I've got. This is a image like sort of a regular standard screen resolution of 72 DPI, and it's about 1400 pixels wide by 900 pixels tall something like that. I'm going to click OK. Alright, so you're thinking, okay, what is the deal with this? This looks terrible. Um, what we're actually going to do is change the blend mode of that to overlay. And then we're going to duplicate this layer, I think at least one more time. Let's go ahead and do that. So while that layer is selected, press Command J or Control J. And Again, what this does with that in overlay mode is it takes all of those edges that it found and it just kind of uh, uh, makes them pop out a little bit more and, and you actually can see some of the graininess and the texture of, uh, of the various things in the image kind of pop out a little bit. You don't want to go crazy with it. Um, you can actually do it to the point where everything sort of looks like it's got this hazy outline around it and that doesn't look very good. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is select all of these layers and I'm going to put them in a group by pressing Command or Control G. And there we've created our group. Now we can kind of compare the before and after that we have so far. So there's the before. 
there's the after. You can already see that it's a lot brighter. Um, you know, the edges of the of the chair are defined a little bit more, and it's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to go down to my background layer now, and I'm going to press Command J again, create yet another copy of this. I'm going to drag it up above the high pass layers. I'm going to name it Blur. And I'm going to keep it below all of the adjustment layers because we want all of those things to still apply to it. I'm going to go up to the filter menu again, go to Blur, and choose Gaussian Blur. And we're not going to go crazy uh, with blurring blurring this out too much. I'm just going to go, I guess, three pixels is what it's set at, and that's pretty good. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, three pixels. And so now we're all blurred out. Next, I'm going to add a layer mask to this uh, right down here. I don't know if you know what a layer mask is or what it does, uh, and so I'll show you. If you hold down the Alt or the Option button and you click on the mask icon for this layer, and you can see exactly what the mask is, which in this case is all white. Um, basically, everything that uh, let me go here, everything on the mask that's painted white um, will show through. So wherever the white is, that's the area that this layer will show throughout. If I paint on black into this area, um, let me just do that again. Let's see here, increase my brush size and make sure your default or your uh, your color is set to black there, your foreground color. I'm just going to paint around in there. All right, so we've got this black. So basically what we should see is that uh, in this black area, the layer won't be visible. So being that we're on the blurred layer, everything around here should be blurred, but the black area should be should be uh, clean because it's not showing. You know, Everything underneath it's still showing. So let's check that out. And as you can see, um, everything in this area is crystal clear, and this area is blurred. So basically what I want to just do here, I'm not a photographer, so I don't know if this is exactly the right term, but I'm just going to add more depth of field. So by bringing some things into focus, um, you're making the background look kind of further away or, or a little more, uh, you know, it's just, just blurred out. It just, it just doesn't look as close. In any case, it kind of uh, makes things nice. So I've turned that uh, preview of the mask off. I've got my uh, foreground layer set to black, and I'm just going to take a pass right across here. So I'm going to hold the Shift key down before I do it. That'll help me just draw it in a straight line. And my computer's running a little slow here right at the minute. But you can see now that we've got just a nice clear path right across there. And then, you know, the background's a little blurred. And the foreground right here is a little bit blurred too. So now what I'm going to do, and you can see what that did to our mask here. I'll just show you again. So that's what I basically painted in. Now what I'm going to do is just take a small brush, and you're just going to basically uncover everything in the image that you want to be, uh, you know, sharp and and in focus. So I'm I'm basically painting right now with black just gonna go around here and if you mess up um, don't worry you know you can always go back and just paint it in with white so there I got a little bit uh, that that edge so I'm gonna I just switch to white by pressing the X key on the keyboard there we go I'm gonna press that again now switch me back to black and right up in the sky here it doesn't have to be perfect because that's all a lot of the same color up in there just going to paint this down here. And you could spend a lot of time doing this kind of stuff depending on what uh, what your image looks like and, and all that. But I'm getting the, the edges here. And then I'll show you what we can do with the rest of it. So we've got most of it. Might just clean up a little bit around this so the the trees aren't showing at all and they're they're all pretty well blurred out just refine that edge just a hair alright that's pretty good pretty good switch that there we go alright now I'm gonna go back and show you this uh, mask layer you can see so we've got this area underneath the chair and then everything in here basically we want this whole chair to be uh, you know bright and vivid and you can see it's all rough around there it doesn't really matter what the edges of it look like as long as you know they're not really affecting um, 
you know, as long as you can't really see it in the image. I'm going to switch my brush color to the foreground color, which is black, and then I'm just going to paint all inside this area with my brush. And that should be pretty good. Now I'm going to press the Alt key and click on this again. And we'll just want to go and, you know, clean up this area in here in the arm. That's pretty good. All right. Great. All right. So now if we compare, it's it's not going to be a major difference. It's it's going to be fairly subtle. Um but if I just close this layer off, turn it off, you can see that the chair, you know, is obviously the picture the grass here in this picture is is in a little more focus up here. But in this case, we've made this grass right right by where the chair's setting pop out. Um, and everything behind it is just a little bit more blurred and, and in the background. And we've also, you know, isolated this chair a little bit to make it look like it's standing out f apart from the background a little bit. Um, you know, like I said, just a way to kind of give it a little more interest. So, all right, we'll uh, show you the before again and swipe away to the after. And uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. If uh, you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those. And uh, looking forward to doing a few more of these tutorials. Hope you like them.